Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of John Garish and Alan Chung? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll start with the background of this case, including the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. John Garish and Ellen Chung moved from San Francisco to Mariposa County, California in March of 2020. They had a daughter named Miju. John, who was originally from England, worked as a software engineer for Snapchat. Ellen had been a yoga instructor. She wanted to be a marriage and family therapist and was working toward a master's degree in that discipline. The couple had made the move after John began working from home. They wanted to get away from San Francisco so they could raise their daughter closer to nature. They wanted to be in a less hectic environment. John and Ellen were described as generous, sweet, and devoted to their daughter. On August 15, 2021, 45-year-old John and 30-year-old Ellen took their 1-year-old daughter and their 8-year-old dog on a hiking trip in the Sierra National Forest. The couple's nanny reported them missing the next day after arriving at the couple's home and finding no one there. This was a Monday the couple had left on Sunday. One witness reported the family had been near the trailhead for the Height Cove Trail. The police started looking in that area and found the couple's truck parked near the entrance to the trail. On August 17, the bodies of John, Ellen, their daughter, and their dog were discovered in an area referred to as Devil's Gulch. They were close to the Merced River. John was discovered in a seated position with his daughter and the family dog near him. Ellen was found farther up a hill. The cause of death was a mystery. There were no signs of trauma on their bodies, no physical wounds. Investigators had no idea how they died. Here's the timeline of their hike. The investigators were able to piece this together from various information sources. The couple started hiking on August 15, just before 8 a.m. from the trailhead. The elevation there was about 3,900 feet, and the temperature was around 75 degrees. Their intended hike was an eight-mile loop, so they would end up back at their truck when they were done. The couple had an 85-ounce water container and no filtration equipment. There was not a lot of shade on the trail. After walking downhill for 2.2 miles, they reached the South Fork of the Merced River at an elevation of 1,900 feet. By this time, the temperature was somewhere between 92 and 99 degrees. They then walked on a flat stretch that was not quite two miles long. The elevation was 1,800 feet. By now, the temperature was as high as 103 degrees. They were found dead as they went back up the hill at an elevation of about 3,100 feet. The high temperature that day was somewhere between 107 and 109 degrees. The family had completed over six miles and was only 1.6 miles away from their vehicle. The last part of their journey, of course, was uphill because they started at 3,900 feet and they were going to end where they started. One by one, investigators worked to rule out each potential cause of death. One early theory is that they had died due to toxic algae which was in the nearby river, but the authorities determined they did not drink from the river. The water container was empty. There were no signs of toxic algae in the container. The police then ruled out exposure to carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, illegal drugs, alcohol, and cyanide. The couple did not die due to a lightning strike, and they did not bring an end to their own lives. About two months after they died, investigators concluded that the three family members died from hyperthermia, and probable dehydration. Their dog died from heat-related issues. Now moving to my analysis. Before the investigators figured out the cause of death, there was a lot of speculation about what happened. There were different theories like homicide, aliens, and supernatural forces. The case really was a mystery because even though it occurred to many people that hyperthermia could be involved, nobody thought that the couple would have made that mistake. It seems fairly basic. People said they were simply too intelligent to have run out of water. This was a planned hike. Why wouldn't they bring enough water? 
they were experienced with the outdoors, certainly they would have known how important water is when it's over 100 degrees outside. The sheriff had been working in that area for about 20 years and never heard of anybody dying from hyperthermia. What happened in this case? How could this couple have been so reckless when they otherwise appeared to be quite responsible? Also, why would a couple bring along their one-year-old daughter on such a dangerous hike? It is reasonable to assume that this was an accident. The couple didn't plan to die on this hike. Here's what I think happened. For some reason, the couple did not check the weather conditions, so they did not know how hot it was going to get that day. Or they may have assumed that they would complete the hike very quickly and not be outside during the hottest part of the day. Everybody hikes at a different speed, but there are general rules for how long it takes to hike one mile. If somebody is hiking over relatively level terrain, it takes about a half hour to go a mile. Another half hour should be added for every 1,000 feet uphill that the person will be traveling. Generally, descending takes the same amount of time as walking on a level surface. The couple may have erroneously believed that they could complete the hike in four or five hours before the peak temperature. The trip started out with them descending, then they walked on a relatively flat area, so in the beginning, they were probably making very good time. As it started getting hotter, they weren't feeling too great. Maybe they realized that they were in trouble at this point. As they started to ascend the hill, it really hit them. Now they were in a very serious situation. They were near the lowest elevation in the loop. Whether they went back the way they came or pressed forward, they were going to have to ascend about 2,000 feet. Continuing forward was the shortest route, so they decided to keep going. John had a cell phone with him, but it's not clear if he ever attempted to use it. They only had 85 ounces of water with them and no filtration system. This was reckless. By not having two separate containers, they had no way to safely separate, like during an emergency. What if one of them was injured, like with a sprained ankle? One person would have to leave, but only one person could take the water. They put themselves in a bad situation. Both people would need the water. I'm not aware of any report indicating where the empty water container was found, like who had it, but it was empty either way. At some point, John was unable to keep hiking. John stayed in one place with his daughter and the dog as Ellen went to get help. John had been carrying his daughter on his back, and he was about 15 years older than Ellen. She was probably not feeling as sick as he was, but clearly she was not doing well, or she would have taken her daughter with her. Like if she was fine and John was the only one who was sick or injured, why would she have left her daughter behind? It's possible that Ellen actually stayed behind too long, like stayed with John and her daughter, hoping that John would feel better and they could continue hiking. There's not really much information about the personalities of John and Ellen. They were described as generous and sweet, as I mentioned. Perhaps they were also high in agreeableness. I wonder if because of John's age, he was a little bit more dominant in the relationship, so maybe Ellen was following his lead, reasoning that he knew what he was doing. He knew his limits in that environment. Leaving John and her daughter behind was probably very difficult either way. Ellen breaking off on her own was out of desperation. She knew they were in trouble. As she traveled up the hill, the heat and the dehydration became too much. I think the reality is that John and Ellen backed themselves into a corner by being unprepared. Sometimes people with this mentality tend to stay calm when things start to unravel. I think that John and Ellen were probably confident in their abilities and their level of preparation. So as they started to feel sick, they didn't necessarily panic right away. Toward the end, however, they were almost certainly experiencing a lot of panic and anxiety. On the way to dying from hyperthermia, they would have experienced heat exhaustion then heat stroke. Heat exhaustion can occur when a person's core temperature is between 98.6 degrees and 104 degrees. Heat stroke is when the core temperature rises above 104. The mental health symptoms associated with heat stroke include anxiety, confusion, slurred speech, agitation, irritability, delirium, and visual disturbances. It's reasonable to believe that they were not communicating effectively near their last moments. Even though heat stroke is quite dangerous, the mortality rate is only 10% for those who are treated promptly. Clearly, in this situation, the family did not have access to treatment. People are understandably reluctant to criticize those who tragically die. 
especially when the death is considered accidental. Some people look at this case and say their deaths were not preventable. It was just a terrible tragedy. It was a random occurrence. Who could have predicted that it would be hot outside? How can the temperature rise that high? Certainly, having compassion for these individuals is warranted, and this was a tragedy, but there is no doubt this was 100% preventable. Weather reports are readily available so that people can be aware of what temperature it will be. This is not a new technology. Even if they didn't check the weather, they were hiking in August in Central California in a place called Devil's Gulch. I find it impossible to believe that they thought a place named Devil's Gulch was named that way because of its relaxing cool breezes. John and Ellen made a series of very dangerous mistakes. They may have been experienced with the outdoors, but that doesn't mean they were proficient or safe at hiking. Just to name a few of their errors, hiking in the extreme heat, hiking into an area with no shade, taking their daughter with them in those conditions, taking their dog with them, he probably consumed water as well, so he depleted their supply of water more quickly than it would have been depleted if he wasn't there, not carrying more than one water container, not carrying enough water, and not bringing along a filtration system. I think the lesson in this case is that as people try to protect themselves from various complex, hard-to-detect threats, they should not forget about the obvious and basic threats, like hot weather and dehydration. Those are my thoughts on the case of John Garrish and Ellen Chung. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.